The IKEA Business Network is now open for small businesses and entrepreneurs. Join for free today to get access to interior design services to help you make the most of your workspace, employee well-being benefits to help you and your people grow, and amazing discounts on travel, insurance, and IKEA purchases, deliveries, and more. Take your small business to the next level when you sign up for the IKEA Business Network for free today by searching IKEA Business Network. My dad works in B2B marketing. He came by my school for career day and said he was a big ROAS man. Then he told everyone how much he loved calculating his return on ad spend. My friends still laugh at me to this day. Not everyone gets B2B, but with LinkedIn, you'll be able to reach people who do. Get a hundred dollar credit on your next ad campaign. Go to LinkedIn.com slash results to claim your credit. That's LinkedIn.com slash results. Terms and conditions apply. LinkedIn, the place to be to be. This is Optimal Finance Daily. What philosophy can teach us about our finances by Cynthia Meyer of financialfinesse.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. I'll keep this intro nice and short. So let's get right to it as we optimize your life. What Philosophy Can Teach Us About Our Finances by Cynthia Meyer of FinancialFinesse.com Do philosophers have something to teach us about financial wellness? I think so. There are practical lessons, not just facts to learn for SAT preparation. For example, author Henry David Throw wrote about the value of the simple life in his book, Walden, over 160 years ago, emphasizing independence, non-attachment, and nature. Throw observed how his fellow Americans spent their time and money. He concluded that most end up living their lives on desperate terms to meet someone else's obligations, instead of by their own design. Throw meticulously calculated and kept track of every dollar he spent while living by Walden Pond. He challenged every financial decision to make sure it was something he really needed. While this is probably too extreme in our busy lives, we can use his example to help us live our lives by our terms, not by someone else's. I did an experiment a couple of years ago and wrote down every penny I spent for a month. Just one month was enough for me to see the waste in my spending habits. It doesn't seem like a lot when you purchase the gourmet coffee or the impulse item by the checkout, but I discovered that I wasted over $200 that month on items I didn't need. And that was a month that I was consciously thinking about it. I probably turned down twice that amount that I would normally have spent. That's spending my money on someone else's terms, not by my design. I discovered that if I could reduce the waste and save $250 per month, my family would be able to enjoy a $3,000 vacation every year. We set up an online banking account and have funded it since then. Two years ago, we drove from Omaha, Nebraska to LA, enjoying the country along the way. Last year, we went on a seven-day cruise to the Bahamas, funded mostly by the money we would have wasted if we continued to fall for the traps. A modern day philosopher, actually the songwriter and lead singer for punk rock band Talking Heads, had his own version of living a desperate life. From the song, Once in a Lifetime, quote, and you may find yourself living in a shotgun shack, and you may find yourself in another part of the world, and you may find yourself behind the wheel of a large automobile and you may find yourself in a beautiful house with a beautiful wife, and you may ask yourself, well, how did I get here? End quote. How did I get here? Now, I love my beautiful wife and wouldn't change that decision for the world, but some of my financial decisions in the past have been less than wise. During a three-year period, I traded in five different cars because I couldn't find the right one. Looking back, those car upgrades cost me over $10,000 in trade-in differences. The dealer sure liked me then. I learned my lesson and have had the same pickup for the last eight years. I plan on driving it for the next eight. I discovered that the new car sensation only lasts about a month or two for me. Then it's just a vehicle to get me there. That car payment can be used for a better purpose, like retiring earlier. 
The philosophers have something to say about our financial wellness if we'll listen. Number one, think differently. Thoreau once said that the mass of men live lives of quiet desperation. Don't be one of them. Live within your means. Save, make it one of your bills for the goals that are important to you. Go through your budget and challenge everything in it. Ask the question, does this item fulfill my life or could I use this money to start funding the life I really want to live? Number two, do it yourself. Thoreau did much, if not all, of his labor to build his home and tend his garden while living on the pond. Doing everything yourself isn't realistic, but there might be some things that you could do to save a lot of money. Number three, be the wiser. We're sold something everywhere we go these days. Insurance, warranties, impulse items by the checkout. Do a little research to see if there's real value in these purchases you only get to spend that dollar once. And number four, you are in charge. You are in charge of your own life, your financial decisions, and your future. No one else is going to be more interested in your financial success than you. Take control of your financial life and start making the decisions today that will enable you to do what you want to do in the future. You just listened to the post titled, What Philosophy Can Teach Us About Our Finances by Cynthia Meyer of financialfinesse.com. And I'll be right back with my commentary. Want to teach your kids financial literacy, but not sure where to start? Greenlight can help. With Greenlight, parents can keep an eye on kids' spending and saving, while kids and teens use a card of their own to build money confidence. As a parent, you can send instant money transfers, set up chores, automate allowance, and more. It's a convenient way to run your household, customized to your family's needs, and the easy way to raise financially smart kids. Get started with Greenlight today and get your first month free at greenlight.com Spotify. Cynthia mentions that Thoreau concluded that most people end up living their lives on desperate terms to meet someone else's obligations instead of by their own design. As hard as it can be to spend our resources according to our values, I think it's even harder to figure out what those values even are. We're all subject to social norms and conditioning, so it can be challenging to determine if we want what we want in a self-directed way or if it's just because we've been programmed culturally to desire certain things. This is why I think personal development practices like journaling, taking walks, meditation, and in general, a quieting and slowing down can be really important. These practices allow you to get in touch with the quiet voice inside that knows what will be most fulfilling. We spend so much time being externally focused and looking for answers outside of ourselves. But throw is a good example of a different approach that embraces solitude and simplicity. In our fast-paced, hyper-connected world, it's easy to lose sight of our true desires and values. We're bombarded with messages about what success looks like, what we should aspire to, and what will make us happy. These external pressures can drown out our inner voice, making it difficult to discern our genuine aspirations. Thoreau's philosophy of living deliberately and simplifying life serves as a reminder that we need to create space for introspection. By slowing down and engaging in practices that foster self-awareness, we can begin to peel away the layers of societal conditioning and reconnect with our authentic selves. This journey of self-discovery isn't always easy, but it's essential for living a life that's truly our own. But that'll do it for today in another installment of Optimal Finance Daily. Have a happy Thursday. Thank you for being here every day and listening. And I'll see you on the Friday show tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.